So can we start, people? Excuse me. C can you hear me at the back? Ah, okay. Uh, how many of us at least you know, managed to attempt uh, the first part of the lab exercise, or the laboratory exercise, which is nice, right? It's good enough. So we, we realized, um, oh, you, oh, you didn't, right? Yeah, so what we did was we've, we've made like slight changes. I, I, I uploaded like um, an updated version of the, um, well, of the exercise, which has like a, a slightly easier function that we can use. And we did something very silly. We, we copy pasted the 200, and I was just telling someone that we copied and pasted the 253 records, and so we, we won't have to use the function that actually, well, so we won't, we won't have to use the function that reads the CSV file now, which is fine. Uh, excuse me, uh, there's a question here, you might, you know, yeah. I think the error in your CSV was that the... Someone found an error, thank you. Yeah. I think there was a couple of uh, coding errors in your... Oh, thank you. For okay. In the file name? Yeah. Ah. No, so I, I thought we, we picked up some. Uh, in the file name? You mean the file name, the variable, the file underscore name? Or what? Or you mean the file name, the CSV for oh, all? Yeah, well, all right, thanks. Thanks for people. Well, you debugged and you found the error. Thank you. Um, yeah, but, but so what, what we did, I would really. I you guys to just you know kind of go through the lab exercise. It's it's really important. Um, plus, it's easy, right? Uh, so just just a slight recap here. Uh, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, we th there's a new function. So if if you look at the updated version of the lab exercise, um, we've included a, a new function called uh, CSC 1017F underscore Vula list. Uh, you, you don't have to evoke it with any. Uh, any arguments or any actual parameters. All you have to do is. Uh, um, uh, so download the Python file, the CS, CSC 1017f vulaDB.py file, save it into the directory where you normally save your module files, right? And then, uh, as you are attempting the, the questions in the laboratory exercise, what you should do is you should just issue an import statement, right? And then you can invoke the, the function just like this, right? Essentially what this does is it returns the list, okay? Um, and this stuff is easy. And just out of interest here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in you know, getting a sense of how people, you know, manage to, to normalize the, those of us who attempted it. How, how, how people manage to normalize the, uh, you know, the strings, the record strings. The split was was one option, yes, which is what I used. Ah, that's interesting. How how do you look through it? You create, um, create okay, you create a list, then in the for loop. In, inside your loop, you create a list where you put in when you put in the each each value. Then you take that list, you append it to your list. How did you look through the 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 semicolon separated string though? Because, because uh, each 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 of those things. Like each of these records, yes. It's it's it's, a, it's like an item of the list, right? Well, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, so you look through it, yeah? Yeah, you look through it, and you take it, you put it in the list. Then you take that list, you append it to another list. Okay. I suppose that would do. That's good. An important thing here, right? Uh, this is interesting. You should tell. Important thing here, right? The, 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 the split method that people are talking about here is, is actually within the string class, right? And so evoking it on, on something like we have in line number, line number eight, and I don't know if I have an example here. Yes. So evoking it on, you notice that, uh, you notice that va underscore vula is being derived from, uh, so we, we are deriving it from, uh, well, from our list, right? So it's a string, right? And so, we're, well, it's, it's, it's actually a list item, right? So what we're doing is we are, we are, we are splitting the resulting uh, string, right, by evoking the split method. But the thing is the split method is within the string class, right? So var underscore record here is a string, right? So split, and split returns a list. Right? So what you end up with is uh, obviously a list, right? And you can do a, a number of fancy things like, uh, you know, remove the comma because we know that the, the last name uh, is delimited by a comma and then followed by the middle name and the first name or the first name and the middle name, right? So it's easy stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we are looking at dictionaries today. 
and uh, quickly wrap up dictionaries and then hopefully, or not hopefully, uh, Monday we sh or Tuesday we shall uh, quickly run through sets and then look at multidimensional arrays and then we are done, well at least for this block, right? Okay, so just, uh, just to, to, to start this whole thing, the ball rolling here, just a couple of examples of where we would typically find uh, dictionary, you know, oriented kind of like uh, scenarios, right? So these, these online accounts that we keep creating, you know, uh, entire username, you know, email address, uh, password and the like, I mean, that's, that's perhaps something that you could easily classify as a dictionary, right? Because what you have is uh, a whole range of users creating, you know, accounts with different values, right? But the labels are the same, right? So labels like email, uh, your, your, your full name or your first name, last name, and the email address, right? right? Typical examples of uh, dictionaries there, right? Um, and and, and in, in a way, what, what we're looking at yesterday could just as well easily be converted, as, as opposed to using a list, we could easily convert you know, the 253 records into, into a dictionary, right? Because what we have as our first record there is, is essentially a header, right? right? So you can, you can easily map the, the individual you know, columns in your header to the 253 records, right, and come up with the dictionary. And, and hopefully, I think we'll probably get to do this in the lab exercise. If not, maybe we'll just quickly skim through it uh, towards the end of this session, lecture session, to see how we can, we can go about do, do, doing that. And I'm hoping people will be able to, to tell us which of the two approaches is better, right? Uh, is it better to use uh, dictionaries uh, as opposed to this, in the case of our Vula database, right? So there's, there's a whole range of, of, of examples that you could, you could, you could pretty much uh, cite or look at here. And I, I, was, I was thinking when I was creating these slides, right? I, I, I haven't used Windows in a very long time, but I remember like the registry, the Windows registry actually has like key value pairs as well, right? So if you, you've poked around the Windows registry, you, you can actually get a sense of like what sort of keys you have there and corresponding values, right? And environment variables, right? When you're in Windows as well, in Linux we have environment variables as well, but in Windows when you're I don't know how many of you have. Has anyone ever played around with environment variables here in Windows? Well, let's not get it. Google it up, and then you know you can you can try and get a sense of what what we're talking about here, right? Okay, so more rules here, right? And and I I don't think I can I can stress any further the fact that all we are doing here is is trying to understand the rules, right? Uh, the logic is easy enough, so the rules are pretty pretty straightforward. All we have to do is just follow them, right? And um, we're home and dry, right? So dictionaries, just like lists, uh, essentially used to to store um, so information that might uh, somehow be related to each other, right? So they are container structures, right? Um, and so what that does is um, it enables us to to sort of like uh, store. Um, information within those container structures that would want to perform actions that are somewhat similar, right? Or related to that information, right? And the way that we define dictionaries, the optional way of defining or creating a dictionary is we use curly brackets this time around, right? Remember with list, it was square brackets, but we're using uh, right now the curly brackets, right? And then, um, so your, your items are essentially made up of key value pairs, right? Your keys are, separa are separated by full columns, right? Right, just a few things to know here. Uh, and then the, the actual items, your key value pairs that are separated by full columns are subsequently followed by, or separated by commas, right? So if you have uh, more than one uh, dictionary item, you have to separate those items by commas, right? Okay, so key value pairs are separated by commas. Pretty straightforward, right? And here's the thing, uh, keys are unique, right? So there's no ways we can have uh, a dictionary that has uh, a key uh, with an identifier of one, for instance. It won't happen. It's not an error, it won't happen. Uh, what, what the Python interpreter does is basically overwrites uh, one of the values, right? It merges them together, right? Values, on the other hand, uh, you can have duplicate values, right? Uh, oh, okay. yeah, values may not, right? Uh, so values, you can have du duplicate values, um, and at the same time, uh, your values can be of any data type, right? Same goes for 
the, so the same goes for, for keys, with the exception that your keys can, can never be mutable types. And this is, this is very important here, right? It's important because we know that a string, a str so a variable of type string can be a key, right? Right, so uh, a variable of type number, an integer or a float can be a key, right? But a list can never be a key, right? Because we learned the day before yesterday that lists are actually mutable, right? This is, this is very important here. You can, you can try these things out. I don't know if I have examples here. I hope I do, right? Um, and then you use, so the thing is, uh, instead of, remember with lists and strings, you know, the sequences we're using like indices, so uh, the, 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 the integer values indicating the position of the particular item or character that we're interested in is what we use to retrieve that particular character or item. But with, with dictionaries, what we do is we use the keys, right? And this, uh, and this is, actually, this, this makes sense uh, because we just learned that keys will almost always be unique, right? So you use your keys as, 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 as lookup values for, or as lookup information for your values. Just like we do in Google, right? I'm looking for something I'll key in, like a keyword, and then it will give me the results that I want, right? Aha! Dictionaries are mutable, right? We can change them, just like this. Interesting. So th this, this actually makes it possible for us, assuming we are uh, playing around with our, uh, our Vula database and we wanted to, well, we realized that, uh, well, I realized that my name was, was not spelled correctly and wanted to change it. We can easily change it, right? Because the dictionary is mutable. We can change it without having to create um, a separate copy of that particular dictionary, right? So it's mutable. Sorry. Yes. Keys are unique. Yes, Sorry. This will make sense, I think. I don't know if there's an example. What we mean is if we're creating a dictionary with, uh, with these things here, and three Okay, let's, let's try with a, a simpler case with another four, right? So you notice that this, this, is, this is fine. We have duplicate values with, with um, the four is, is duplicate, but it's a value, right? But all our keys are unique here. But look at what happens if we, we try and, and, and add an extra key, let's say one, right? But with value zero, right? You notice what happens? It overrides the previous, um, it, it's, it's overridden this, this thing here, right? So, no, 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 so um, uh, Miss Annette George, is she here? Oh, she, so, uh, and, and this is the other thing, right? Uh, she, she raised a very important question. I track my URLs, those things that I post on Vula. Only one person clicked on the link, right? <laughs> no, this is serious, only one person. The previous links that I, that, I, that I posted in the discussion forum, only seven people out of 165, come on, people. So, uh, your question again? Uh, do the keys have to be in? No, no, no. So, so we, we discovered uh, that beginning Python 3, I think, um, so the, the behavior of dictionaries is such that um, they are unordered by nature. And so if you actually do multiple runs on them, you won't have like a consistent like, sequence in which they appear. So no. you should look at the link, the link that has seven clicks, right? All the seven people know what I'm talking about here. OK. OK. So just uh, some, some, some few examples about how we go about doing some of these things, right? So remember we said uh, we, we create, and please let us ask questions here because uh, this is second last session. We, we, we are saying that uh, we can optionally create dictionaries by using the curly brackets, right? So this is a classic example of how we go about doing it. I decided to pull out something that we are now familiar with, the exercise that we were working on yesterday. Um, and you notice that in line number one here we're creating uh, a dictionary, van das for dict, right? With, uh, ah, with how many, how many keys do we have in, in the dictionary, van dict? Yes. Four. 
four keys, right? Uh, would you like to help us name the keys so that people, people, I hate what? We hate what? Um, name, yes. user ID, email, and role. So it's these things, right? Remember we're saying key value pairs separated by four colons? So key value, can you see my cursor? Yes, you can. Key name, value x, 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 comma, y, y, right? Uh, item separated by commas, the next item, is a key value pair, key user ID, value X, Y, right? Separated by a comma, right? I mean, so this is, this is where the four is coming from, right? <coughs> this is interesting. Uh, and and, and um, funny enough, our, our dictionary is actually composed of uh, keys that are of type string and values of type string as well, right? Because we know that strings are immutable, right? So we can have them as keys as well. Okay. So here's uh, another way in which we can, just like with lists, we can pretty much do this. And what, what this, it's a construct actually, but we, we actually call it a function. What this function does is it creates an empty list, right? So if you, if you evoke dict, right, it will create your empty dictionary, right? This is what it does. I really can't think of like uh, a use, uh, perhaps there is actually a use case where you, you'd want to first of all create an empty list before you start populating it, but I suppose there are a couple of like, um, you know, use cases. Right? And you notice if we, if we evoke the type function here on, on these variables that we're creating one, it, it actually shows us that this is a dictionary, right? It's a dictionary, all right? Interesting. Oh, what did you say this? So, uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay. Yes. I'm not following the sequence of the slides here. I think you could. I mean, I, I haven't, uh, I, I don't really remember, but uh, what I do know is, or I think it does, because if you look at the, it actually does, actually, I think. Um, I don't know what data type you need to, to feed it, but um, you notice that it takes in, or it takes in a mapping, it has to be a mapping. I don't know how we can easily define a mapping, right? So the optional way of, of, of you creating a dictionary, if you don't want it to be empty, but if you want to use the dict function, is you can feed it a mapping. I can't think of an example of how we can create a mapping here. You can look it up, right, so it does. <coughs> All right, so just, just some, some examples of what we're trying to, what we're trying to stress here, what we're, what we're trying to point out. The fact that keys are unique, right, but values cannot be unique, right? Um, and I've already illustrated this example here. So using our database, our Vula database, you notice that if we have, uh, in line number one here, we have two names, right? Two, so two, we have two items with the same key, name, the first and the second, right? If, if, you, if, you, if you actually feed it to the interpreter, what it will do is it will, it will deduplicate this one by replacing it with, um, with this value here, right? So, sorry? It's always the one that has to find later on the list that's, that's, that's the final one. Yes, that's always the case. So the, 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 the last item in the dictionary replaces the, well, is the one that, that becomes the actual value uh, tied to the key that has duplicates, right? And clearly we're trying to emphasize the fact that uh, keys must be mutable here, right? We shouldn't forget this. You can never have um, a list as a key. And we'll soon discover that we can never have uh, sets as keys. Right. OK, so these are just some, some examples of how we go about uh, accessing uh, information within our dictionary, right? Um, remember we said that we, we actually, as opposed to using um, the position or the index corresponding to the value that we're interested in, we use the key, right? So uh, just look, look at what we're doing in line number two here, right? So we've created a dictionary verdict, right? And we're trying to access the value corresponding to the key name, right? And seeing as name is a string, what we're doing is 
we specify within our square brackets to say we are interested in the value that corresponds to the key of type string name here in line number two, right? If our key was 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 a, was an integer, on the other hand, you 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 would have to specify. I mean, you you, you wouldn't have to 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 enclose it in quotes here. It has to be, you know, specified as an integer as a type. Do you think uh, we can have booleans as keys? Don't know. Are, are booleans immutable? Sorry, can you change a boolean? How can you change a boolean? Sorry? Don't know. You should, are you, you should try this out on your Mac, right? On your MacBook Pro. Um, I don't know if it's a MacBook Pro. But yeah, I mean, so, these are, so, so here's the thing. These are some of the questions that we should be asking ourselves, right? Because we, we, we know that pretty much most of the thing, most of the data types that were introduced to us by Professor Berman are practically immutable, right? And so we should, we should try and think about these things, the implications of saying this is mutable, this is immutable, a key cannot be mutable, you know, can a Boolean work? We should ask these questions, right? And here's the thing, right? So if, if you try and, and have an example here of, uh, look at line number one uh, here. I have various line num number ones here, but look at this line number one here. What I'm attempting to do here is I'm, I'm attempting to, to actually specify my, my first item in this dictionary to have a, a key of data type list, right? It's an error. Exactly. Thank you for reminding us, right? Yes, um, okay, in, in the top part, in line number two, like we we're, were basically calling the variables that are, are, are in the key name, right? The items that are in the key name, the values that are in, in name. No, there's no value in them. We're we calling, no, that's the thing, right? We are calling, we're actually, we, we, are, we, are, we, we are interested in the value associated, not in, because it's not in, right? It's associated to the name key. Can you, can you have more than one value associated to the same key? Yes. More than what? No. <laughs> ah, uh, do you want us to play CSD 1017F roulette here? Because I, I keep pointing at people that I've either interacted with and it's a psychological thing here, clearly, you know, because I, I, you know, I ask, is the Tariq had a, a very interesting, Tariq, are you here? Do you think, what, can, can we have multiple values associated, Tariq, I know you're in here. Can we have <laughs> multiple, Tariq had a, an interesting solution to uh, question number one five, right? That's how I figured out his name yesterday. He, was repl he replaced his strings first and then he was doing a couple of interesting things. But Tariq, how, how, how do you suppose we could, we could have like multiple values associated to, to one key? Sorry? I'm not sure. But people, come on. What, what, what sort of data, data types can hold multiple values so far? Which ones do we know? A list. So then can we not associate a single key to a list with multiple values? So we can if, right? We can, right? So listen, if you're keeping quiet, I don't know if I'm not making sense or if, if you're bored or if uh, I need some feedback here. I mean, or if I need to, perhaps I might be sh show, showing you things that you already know, you know, because if you're keeping quiet, what we're saying is that can we create, ca can we not create, uh, ca can we not do this? What's wrong with doing this? Well, nothing wrong, everything is right, right? So yes, it's possible, right? Right, so this is really important here. This, this is an error here, clearly. Key is the least, right? Why, do I always, why am I always saying this? Oh, the, the dictionaries are mutable, right? So here's, here's we're still using our, our example here, right? Um, look, look at what's happening in line number three here, right? Because dictionaries are mutable, we can play around with a dictionary that we've previously created, like in this case is verdict, right? And start changing things in here. So what we're doing in line number three is we're saying we would like to associate the, the name key, right? To, oh, Jane Doe, not John Doe, Jane Doe. Uh, so we are replacing the X, X comma Y, Y with 
do gen, right? Gen do, right? And, 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 and here's the thing, we are mo mo modifying, remember the create and the, the crude thing I spoke about, you know, creating, reading, and updating, and deleting. So what we're doing in line number four here is we're saying uh, we, we want to, to perform like um, a slightly different type of modification on, on our dictionary. But, but this, this modification is different from what we did in line number three because we're introducing what? An additional key. We don't have gender in uh, verdict, right? So we are saying we want to create a new key, right? Uh, gender, and we're associating, just associating it to female, right? Um, so our dictionary will have like an additional item or an additional key value pair, right? Uh, with key gender and value female, right? And we can delete. Right? Just like with list, we can actually delete, uh, we're still modifying here, we can delete uh, specific, uh -huh, specific items from our dictionary, right? You think, uh, where is this delete coming from? This is, this is not, remember we can apply it to, this is, uh, this is a built-in function, right? We can, we can apply delete to list. We can apply, we are now applying the delete function to, to dictionaries, right? It's, we know that it's not part of uh, the dictionary class, because the way that we're evoking the delete statement, it's not even a function here, it's a statement because it doesn't have, uh, the way that we're evoking it is by just calling it without really prefixing it with a dot and the class name, right? Or the instance of the type of the class where it could potentially reside, right? So we can delete our items. And then we see when we start walking through the different methods, right? within the dictionary class that we can actually do what we did with list. We can, we can, we can purge contents completely from, from, from the dictionary, right? With a clear method, right? So th these are all examples of um, <coughs> modifications, right? To our dictionary. She's yawning, are, are you okay? <laughs> Hi. Sorry, where? Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, so I just pointed out something because we are, we are working through with the same, for simplicity's sake and to, to help us follow through the slides and everything else, we're using the same variable verdict, but, but there's a slight error here, line number six, we shall correct it. It's supposed to be verdict here. Right, thanks for that. Yes, it's possible, I think. Because uh, you'd like to leave the variable, but I keep it just so you're taking the variable. But keep the variable. No, no, but you're, you're moving with, with the key. When, when you evoke, like, the, when you use the delete statement here. Yeah. But you just delete the variable and the actual key. Yeah, key still stays. Have you tried it out? No, no, no. Look at Look at this. Look at this. Uh, What delete does is it, it removes the key and the corresponding value, right? Did we all understand what that, this is an important question he just asked. He was, he was trying to find out if, if we can, when, if, if there was a way of deleting the key and the associated value. And we just reminded ourselves that what the, what the delete statement actually does is it removes the key and the corresponding value. So it removes everything from there, right? Uh, oh. The first stop has, is, a, is a different kind of stop here. Stop one, questions, are there, are you guys following through, are, are, are there any questions? Are, are you okay, uh, the guys at the back? Are, are, are you fine, do you, do you have any questions or something? I can't see, I was taught some time back that I was myopic, apparently it runs in the family, right? That explains why my three siblings, oh, yes. Sorry? Let's say? You're a white hat hacker. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, and you want to test the integrity of the company's security. Okay. Like with a brute force attack, and let's say you want to use like dictionaries or this. Yeah. So you look through that and you're inputting those values into like a login portal. Uh -huh. How do you get that from into the portal? Into the portal? Like the logic, you're using the dictionary to 
But how, how is the how how are the records like organized? Like in the where are we reading this information from? We actually sorry, we actually have a slide on how we look through dictionaries. By the way, we have a slide on how we go about looping through dictionaries. Perhaps that will help you answer the question. If not, we can chat afterward. There are no questions clearly, right? And ag again here, we're just going to quickly run through uh, dictionary methods. And what I want us to do is to remind ourselves of the fact that the dictionary is a class. And so the, the methods, remember the, 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 the names are different here. We're using slightly different names. We're no longer calling them functions and methods because we evoke them by specifying the instance of that class dot the function name. So it's a function, it's a class level function, right? So it's a method, right? So we are saying, we are trying to remind ourselves that the way that we evoke these methods is we specify the instance of the dictionary, right? So if we have a dictionary, well, if we have a dictionary named verdict, the way that we evoke our methods on that instance is verdict dot the method that we're interested in, right? This is very important, right? Uh, this is similar to the list thing here, right? So a, a quickly run through here, we, we are not, uh, I think these are, these are things that we can, and, and that's the thing, we don't have to, these are things that we can quickly, these are things that we can probably quickly read ourselves now that we understand the, the, the syntax of evoking you know, uh, methods in a particular class, right? But there are interesting methods here. Get method, right? This is interesting. It, it takes, this is interesting because it has, it has what? It has a required parameter one and, and a default parameter, right? And what this means is that we can evoke the get method by just specifying the key, right? Don't you think this is interesting? What we're saying is that it's instead of, oh, someone has at least nodding. Thank you, miss. Uh, kind miss, you're nodding. Uh, so what we're saying is that instead of, instead of specifying uh, the, the, the exact key that we're interested in by using the square brackets, you know, the name of the dictionary is square brackets with the key inside, what we're saying is we can evoke the get method, right? And specify to say what we're interested in is a particular key that we specify. But the difference with this is it has a default it has a default value that allows you to specify uh, what you'd return if that particular key does not exist, right? Do, do you understand what we're saying? We're saying if we have get, and we're saying we want a key A from get, and if we say default here, we say is not there or something. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why, 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 why is get not, what have I done wrong? What, have I, what am I, can I, what are we doing wrong here? What? No, 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 this is, this is, what, what are we doing wrong here? We're doing something wrong here. What are we, are we looking at, why aren't we, what, what did we do wrong before? I don't know what we did wrong, but what we're saying is that we, we don't want to waste time because we are figuring out what we did wrong, we'll figure it out after. But what we're saying is that, is, look at what just happened, because there is no A in our dictionary, D, D is empty, there's no A. So instead of it, look at what happens if we, if we, if we just feed it with A, it will do nothing, and we won't know what happened, right? So to help us figure out what is going on, we can use the optional parameter and say, print out something. It doesn't have to be, it's not there. You can use like a Boolean flag if you want to, right? To signal whether there's something true or false. If there is something, it's obvious by default true. You understand how this thing is working? But this is, this is really important. The, 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 the fact that it takes in two parameters here, one required parameter and the parameter, right? Right? There's a... There's also the keys, um, there's also the keys, uh, oh. there's, there's also the keys, um, there's also the keys function. It takes in, it doesn't take any, any variable. I'm quickly walking you through these things because I, I just, I, I want you guys to, to, to let us know if you have questions with regards to these messages. These, these are pretty, pretty straightforward things, right? Because they exist. Because they're in the manual, all you have to do is run help on the dictionary, you will see these methods. 
but we're trying to remind ourselves of the implications of not having like a formal parameter in the key here. You can invoke it without anything, right? Right? Values. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to run through something that we did earlier to see if we remember what, what we did, right? Um, uh, a, a sample output here. I'm, I'm running through because we don't have time, right? Do you remember this? Where did we see items? Sorry, quags. Ah, the, the guy who coined quags, right? He beat you to it, sorry. The guy, the guy who coined the name quags, uh, keyworded uh, arguments. We did it in functions, right? We, we were playing around with items, and people were confused where items was coming from. And we said that when we, when we use uh, quags, uh, right, keyworded parameters in a function, what Python does internally is it converts those arguments into a dictionary, right? As a result, as a result it makes it possible for us to actually run or to evoke the items method on our quads parameter. That's what we did, and this makes sense. We just discovered right now it's in the dictionary class, right? Does, does anybody know how else we can, how, how, would you, how would you loop through if you had like a, a list of numbers, right? Uh, how would you look through, well, if you had alpha, alpha B, A, B, C, D, and I wanted to write zeros and the like, how would I look through it? Um, I'm not making sense here, am I? If, if I had, uh, anyway, I just wanted to find out if people knew of another way in which you can, you can, because we discovered that what items does is it makes it possible for us to, look at this, right? Look at, look at this, this is, this is uh, slightly important. What items does is it makes it possible for us to do this, right? Do we, do we remember this? We did this, guys, right? We did it together and we had fun, right? <laughs> no, we, we did, no, seriously, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's, it's true, right? Remember what we did, but what I was trying to, to find out is what if we had, um, what if we had this, right? One, two, three, right? How, how would we look through it like, like with two values? If I wanted not two, three, right? What if I had, uh, what if I wanted, uh, I, I just want you guys to remember that there, there are some cool things that we can do with, with Python here. Python is, is beautiful, right? We can look at, there's a, what I wanted to, to remind you, if you haven't figured out what the enumerate method does is, um, this should work, right? If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll embarrass ourselves here. What I'm saying is we can do this, right? An easier way of, of trying to, to do something similar, well, to, to, to come up with an implementation equivalent to the items method is, like if you're working with, uh, uh, so uh, container structures like lists that only take in single values, right? Is you can uh, evoke the, the built-in enumerate function, which is pretty useful sometimes, right? right? Some, some, some really interesting methods here, people, right? We, we remember pop, not, not the, the pop, but pop, the pop method, right? We had it in list, right? What it did in, in the list class is it actually returns, it returns what, miss? Well, in, in the list method, and he remembers, right? In the list method, it returns the, the last item in the list, right? Right, so, so you're modifying the list, right? So you, you evoke pop on the list, you're modifying it, you return the last item in the list, and your, what you call this, your list will no longer have the item that you've popped out, right? Uh, it's always a good idea to create what they call shallow copies, a copy of the list, and we know that there's a copy function in the list method, right? Um, yeah, this is interesting. Pop, uh, pop has like a, pop in here returns the key as well. You know, it has a default value that seemingly, oh, it returns the value and the value data type. I don't know what the default value does here, right? You, you should look it up or something, right? Pop, pop item, on the other hand, does what? It takes in no values, but it returns, why am I not remembering these things? I, am I telling you that? Can we, can we try this out and try and figure out what pop item does? Because I'm curious here, right? We have a dictionary, right? A, what happens if we say pop item, right? 
And in fact, I, I always like to do this because I'm assigning values because I'm interested when I assign values, it makes it a lot easier for me to check the things that are happening. I can check the type. So when I pop out, clearly it returns a tuple here. X is apparently a tuple. So what pop item does, have you noticed what's happening? It just returned this here. It returns your last key value pair in form of a tuple, right? So it separates your key and, and your value, right, with a comma, and then it sets those values into a tuple. I, I mentioned that a tuple is an, another example of a container structure, but we're not looking at tuples for the purposes of this course. Uh, but for those that are curious, uh, in case you won't read about it because we've mentioned that it won't be in the exam and we won't go through it, tuples are immutable. And because tuples are immutable, they, they are a classic example of a container structure that you can actually use as a key within dictionaries, right? right. Right. Uh, update method, uh, copy method. Well, update, do, update does something really interesting here, right? So you can feed it, uh, you can feed it, this is interesting. It takes, it's, it should take in a value here. I, I probably, I was just quick at, at doing this. I'll make this, this, this change. It takes in parameter as, as a dictionary, right? So if you have like two separate dictionaries and you evoke, um, you evoke the, the update method on the first dictionary and feed it the second dictionary. What it does is it, it copies the key value pairs in the second dictionary to your first dictionary, right? And what we're doing is we're updating the, the first dictionary with the contents of the second dictionary, right? right. Copy does exactly what uh, our, our, our infamous or famous uh, copy method from the list method does, right? You're creating a copy of, of, of the container structure. And this is very important, right? It's important, and, and it makes sense that we have copy methods in these, in these mutable data types, right? Because as we are performing operations on these data structures, we would, want, we, would have, we would want to have a way in which we can keep the original copy, right? And so copy makes it a lot easier, right? Ah, she finally asked a question. Sarah Britton told me you used to ask questions, but hi, yeah. Performance reasons, I suppose, uh, but perhaps it's it's not very useful for the purposes of this class. But her question is, and this is a good question, right? Thank you for the question. Her question is, why would we bother, you know, um, <laughs> using the copy method when we could just cr just as well easily create a separate variable and assign it to the list, right? You could do that, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing if you were to compare like uh, the performance of running copy. And, and assigning a variable, perhaps this is more efficient. I don't know. I don't have like an, an answer for you just yet. I'll look for an answer for you. Maybe perhaps you can find it. But you can do it. The important thing to note is that you can actually do what you just said. Right? If, you come, if you feel comfortable doing that, you could do it. Sometimes it's nice to do fancy things like evoke copy instead of assigning variables, right? With a pop. It return, it return a no, but pop doesn't. It doesn't. You, you can't do that because it doesn't. It doesn't get any parameters. There are no parameters. Do, are we making sense here? Right. Are we making sense? There's also clear. I always leave clear for, well, at the end, because we are running through the same examples, and what clear does is it purges your contents, right? We are deleting the. How, how else do you suppose we could delete items from there, you know, besides clear? She has an answer, right? She's, she, do you? <laughs> You can what? A loop. Yes, thank you for that. So we can use a loop. But we just looked at another way of doing it, right? <laughs> the delete statement, people, come on. You're not following, right? So we can use the delete statement, we can use clear, we can loop through it and you know, remove the items, right? So, so here's the thing, right? Let's, let's, let's quickly look at, before we wrap up here, I want us to, 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 to think long and hard about this, right? You, you remember the, the, the laboratory exercise yesterday? How, here's the thing, this is something very serious here. How do we, how, how do we 
How, how would we convert our list into a dictionary here? Ah, she has an answer. I also have a Lenovo, I have the ThinkPad though, but maybe we what? Yeah, but how? But you, you know, you know, you're on the right track, and I know you know what you're talking about. But because the moment you start talking about loops, then you know what you're talking about, right? But I see people. As, uh, I don't know if we are, we are boring here, but people are leaving. But before we leave, uh, so here's here's like my abstract implementation of how I thought we could. Is Alexandra here? Barry, Barry. I don't know. He should be here or something. But here is how I'll do it, right? I'll I'll I'll. Uh, so I I know that. Listen. I, and I have a sample, a sample record. Yeah, I just picked up a random sample record. It's at uh, index 35, right? And it so happens it's Alexandra here, right? And so what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll normalize it in this way, right? And come up with this list, right? Right? And when I come up with this list, I also know that record at index 0 has my header, right? And, and the header has my keys, right? Right? So if I have my if I have my column names here, then how hard could it be for me to say? And, and, and this is the thing, right? How hard could it be for me to say? Uh, let me create a list header, right? And then for for every item that perhaps this is too abstract. Let's do this. Don't go anywhere. Where are you going? <laughs> Please don't go. I, I just I, I won't be long. Please. I just want to, to, to I won't show everything. Please. I see, see. These guys are I, and I'm guessing people are thinking, oh we can always watch the videos. It's always fun when we are sneaking out here, right? So here's here's what I'm saying, people. I'm I'm creating a list uh, database, right? And I know database has my values. So what I'm saying is, I know that this has my, my columns, right? So, so what I'm saying is, why, why can't we do this, people? Why can't we say, uh, so for, for our list in, well, for in I, right? Why, why can't we say for, for everything, right? For all the items that are in what? In DB starting at one, because we don't want the, we don't, we're not interested in the header, right? Why, why can't we, why can't we, come on. Why can't we do this, people? And say, for each of these things, what we want to do is we want to say DB, and let's create a new uh, uh, dict V, right? So we are saying for, for everything that starts from there, why, why can't we say uh, we want DB at zero, right? How do we get the first key? <coughs> How do we get the first column? What? Why, why, can't, why can't we do this? <sighs> Jesus. It's fine. I understand why people are going. It's it's time up. 